Okay, we're going to open our Conservation Commission meeting of January 27th, 2021. At this meeting, the Commission will hold hearings on notices of intent, requests for determination of actability. The Commission will also be voting on decisions and taking other business up. No hearings times have been assigned to the specific agenda items, and the Commission will take them up in the order they are listed. Discussion and action items may be taken up at any time. In accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Executive Order superseding provisions of the Open Meeting Law, we are conducting this meeting online. The Commission welcomes participation in the meeting by the applicants and general public. Attending the meeting tonight are the seven Conservation Commission members, Eric Foley, Margaret Wheeler, Jim Gazzo, Ian Jeffries, Marilyn Frank, Noel Donovan, and Peter Mala, and the Conservation Resource Planner, Matt Salem. This meeting is being recorded by Westwood Cable Access TV. We respectfully ask that everyone mute their computer microphones and phones when they are not in use to avoid unnecessary noise during the meeting. This is an open meeting, so all panelists who have access to the chat panel, please only use chat for technical issues related to the video conferencing. The commission will proceed by opening the agenda items, having the applicant or the representatives present the project or previously open the public meeting. They'll provide a brief summary of the project. The commission and staff will follow with questions and will open up to the public for questions and comments. At this point, if you wish to participate, you will raise your hand and your microphone will be unmuted for you to participate. The limitations of the platform, attendees that are accessing the meeting via the telephone number at the top of the agenda will only be able to listen to the proceedings and will not be able to contribute. Please access the video conference via the link on the agenda, even if you do not have a webcam to participate. I'm going to take a roll call. Marilyn? Yes. Uh, Eric? Here. Ann? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Jim? Jim, you there? Yep, I'm here. And Noel? Yes, here. Great, Noel's here. And Peter's also here. Okay, go to our first agenda item, which is open forum. Members of the commission have anything for open forum? I I have one thing. Um, I had asked town council, I, I had been requested by a couple of people to inquire whether we could limit parking uh, at the lower East Boston Camp parking lot to residents only. And so uh, Matt went ahead and, and instructed town council to give us opinion on that. And the answer to that, and he'll, he can send this, uh, his decision out to you. The answer to that is yes, we can limit it. Um, so um, I don't know where this is gonna go. Um, it obviously would have to involve the selectmen because we have no process set up to, to do parking stickers and to enforce it or do any of that. So um, what I've done is I just forwarded that decisions to the people that asked me that question. And, and it's really up to them to do a follow up if they really want to pursue this. So just so you all are informed of that. Okay. Were they, were they, Peter, were they having yeah. that much, were they having that much trouble with, with finding spaces? Yeah, it is. Yeah. On, on a busy weekend, the, the lower parking lot's just jammed. I mean, the cars are parked all along the access road there. Wow. It's, yeah, it can be a zoo. Absolutely. Yeah. I wonder where, you. you know, I wonder where people who are residents would park, you know, if I sort of well, feel I think, I, 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 I think people, some people in town know that they can go over to Stony Brook School and park over there and go in the back way. And there's uh -huh. plenty of parking over there. Okay. There's a ton of it. The question is, is that there's a lot of people in town that don't like the idea that, you know, they can't get into the lower parking lot. So. Okay. I don't know. It, it, it's going to be an issue probably this spring again. So it, okay. it it really does get packed on a nice a nice weekend with this nice weather. It's well, just it's amazing how many people are up there. But if we do something like that, I think we need a little PR on our website or something too. That tells them about the Stony Brook piece, so we're yeah. not, so we're not yeah, we, being, uh, unfriendly to neighboring communities of people. No, we we, we, right. we can't limit access just to Westford residents to the whole property. And so, in other words, part of part of the town council decision was is that you know if pe people still have to, from out of town still need to have access to the property, which they would, they would just have to go over to Stony say, Brook. We we can promote that down the road. You know, in, yeah. in, in terms of of telling people so that we are user friendly. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, I, I'm I'm not, you know, I'm not entirely backing this. So, 
You know what I mean? I'm just saying it is busy. So okay. And some residents are concerned about it. Okay. So okay. I, I I needed to clarify with town council if if we could do it. So yeah. I get it. Thank okay. you. Yep. Thank okay. Okay. Any uh any open forum from the uh, audience? Any raised hands? Matt, do you have something? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to let the commission know that both uh cpc applications that the commission supported um the o'brien farm footbridge and the forge pond outlet channel uh improvement both of those applications were submitted today so um Good. they're they're progressing into the system i i also uh, submitted our annual uh conservation fund request so we're meeting I sent that in today we're meeting in February. Coffee, okay, we're meeting in February. Yeah, I, I, I sent it to Jesse today and I copied you. Actually, I copied Matt too. So. Okay, thank you. you. Okay. All right, any uh, raised hands, Matt, out there? I do not see any, Mr. Chair. Okay, we're gonna move on to our first agenda item, which is a public hearing for Bowen, 42 Acton Road. It's an IDA. This is a legal notice under Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, Wetlands Protection Act and the Wetlands non zoning Wetlands Bylaw, Chapter 171. Western Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, January 27th, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. PA remote participation to consider a request for determination of backability filed by Kevin Bowen for the removal of six pine trees within 100 feet of a jurisdictional wetland and the removal of one oak tree within a jurisdictional wetland at 42 Acton Road. This is map seven, parcel 52. Kevin, are you there? I am, uh, and you ought to forgive me, my webcam is not working for some strange reason. That's okay, as long as we can hear you. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everybody. Yep. So um, I'm not exactly sure. So uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me back a second. So just just so, tell us what you want to do. Okay. So I have uh, I have a handful of trees out in the front yard that I'm, I'm taking down. I also have, uh, like you said, six pine trees in my backyard. So you can see them. Um, they're numbered one, two, three, four, five, six from the top right uh, towards the center of the page. Uh, those are the pine trees, and I have a, the seventh tree, number seven, over on the left hand side, is the Oak, I believe it's an oak. Uh, I looked at it when the leaves are down. Uh, so I have had a, a dozen or so tree removal companies come on out, and they all agreed that uh, that the trees were old um, and leaning. Some of them had uh, roots exposed, uh, and so in in August, what I or I moved into the house in July. And after about two weeks, we had a microburst and I had two trees come through my roof. Uh, so after that, I did an assessment of all the trees on my property and they're all these gigantic pine trees. Uh, so I'd like to take them down and replace them with maples and arborvitaes and Rosa Sharon's and anything else that will be great and long lasting that's not gonna fall in my house. <laughs> so the, the six pines, they like, as you can see with the red box, noting the previously marked uh, wetland zone, they're outside the wetland zone but they are within the 100 feet that seventh tree right there that oak uh you can see the shadow on the map there that's actually hanging over my fence uh and it is it is in wetlands it's not wet wet but it is still considered wetlands obviously uh so that is the only one with inside the zone that i'm looking to take down and have you been out there yes mr chair um uh, and they are uh, very large the pine trees um i think the wetlands was flagged previously i think when the previous owner put in their pool um as seen on the screen um and uh, mr bone in discussing with mr bowen the um, he is looking to um, replant you know the diverse um lower growing uh or at least currently lower growing trees um, from the um, from the site visit there is a established canopy but the understory is uh, lacking in 
the buffer zone just uh, old growth or older growth um, woodlands. And one of the great things that drew my family to this property was the privacy with all the greenery. Uh, so it, it's not like I'm looking to, to clear cut the land. Uh, I really enjoy having having the private yard and having uh, not being able to see my neighbors and not, <laughs> my neighbors not be able to see me. Uh, so like like Matt indicated, I am going to be uh, putting up some vegetation, like I said, uh, a, a variety of trees and, uh, and and make it look nice. I really enjoy gardening and really enjoy uh, all this. So uh, Mr. Gaza, I, you might have a question. Jim? Uh, yes. Uh, Matt, would you um, say the number seven, tree number seven, the oak or, or whatever that one is, is that threatening a uh, uh, house or uh, well-used recreation areas? Yes, it is. Um, okay. okay. All right. Then I'm, I'm okay with uh, all of them uh, coming down and then uh, the replacements, as the uh, homeowner mentioned, for one through six. Uh, Eric? So I hear about the six pine trees. You want to take them down. Um, I heard a bunch of replacements. You know, we would want to make sure they were, you know, basically trees that would be here, um, you know, indigenous to the area, uh, maybe not exotics. Uh, the one oak that's number seven, that's actually in the wetlands. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so if you're taking down that oak, I'm thinking at the very least we would want them to replace it with another oak somewhere very close to it. I mean, typically we don't let folks take a tree down in the wetlands. I mean, typically in the buffer, but not actually in the wetlands. I mean, if Matt's saying that, you know, it's problematic and it's going to fall and hit the house or do some damage, then I can say, okay, there's justification for removal, but certainly we would want to put another tree in that right. similar area probably so another oak or something similar so i'm not sure who's driving the presentation uh but if you scroll down you can see the pictures of the individual trees uh and i believe on the last page is the picture of the uh of number seven or the last two pages um and it is i mean it's 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 hanging over enough of my fence where my kids play in the backyard where i'm uncomfortable with it um, so that's it right there. Yep. So if it did come down, it would it would it would come through my fence in my backyard, and depending on which which way it swayed into the pool. I'm not uh, saying you can't take it down. Uh, I'm just fair enough. Yep. So so yeah. as far as replacing it um, with with an oak, um, am I permitted to plant an oak in the wetlands? You can't plant anything. In the well, that, 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 that oh, just you're, cutting it, you're cutting a tree in the wetlands, which is kind of a prohibited thing. So if we're doing it for safety purposes, I think at a minimum, we'd want to replace it. Inside but, the wetlands. But, but in the wetlands or outside the wetlands? I put it, we typically, when you cut a tree, we want you to plant something similar close to the tree that you're cutting. Okay. I mean, is, is it right on the edge of the wetlands? Yes. yes. So if you scroll down, you can see. I believe I, there's a picture of where the tag is associated with the. Oh, okay. Yeah. So ten, yeah. ten feet away. Yeah. So that's fine. So plant another tree there. Plant another red oak right there. Just on the on the outskirts of the wetlands, then. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. You're gonna leave the stump, right? Yeah, you're not stumping these, right? Just gonna leave the stump. I'm, I'm, no, I'm not stumping anything. Um, I'm not stumping the one of the wetlands. Uh, am I allowed to stump the ones outside the wetlands in the buffer zone? Yeah, the pines you can grind. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and, so we uh, good with this? We should be good. Do you, okay, any uh, questions from the audience on this application? I don't see any. Okay, so can I have a uh, conditional negative? I'll move. Second. All in favor, Marilyn? Yes. Eric? Yes. Ian? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Jim? Yes. Noel? Yes. And Peter? Yes. Uh, motion to close the public hearing. I'll move. Second. All in favor, Marilyn? Yes. Uh, Eric? Yes. Ian? 
Yes. Margaret? Yes. Jim? Yes. And Noel? Yes. And Peter, yes. Okay, Kevin, uh, you're all set. You'll see Matt for the paperwork. Thank you yep. very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Tomorrow. Yep. Okay. Right. Okay, we're going to move on to our next agenda item, which is the continuation of a public hearing for Lovitz, uh, 68 Carlisle Road. You there, Mr. Lovitz? Need to promote him. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Hello. Um, I don't know if Matt's going to present the pictures or if I was. I wasn't sure we Matt came out and took a bunch of pictures. So, um, all right, we'll let, we'll let Matt go first. Yeah. Okay. We'll and I do have one fun, funny thing about residents only or. When we had when we had both market baskets, I was thinking that it would have been so cool to have Westford only hours because <laughs> it was so busy. So it would have been so cool just to have Westford. <laughs> so I, I just have to say that. I'm sorry. That's great. <laughs> All right. So Matt came right. out and took a bunch of pictures, and I'm going to let Matt talk because he really understands your language okay so mr chair i was out uh, i think tuesday um last week uh, and met with mr lovitz took a couple pictures um to present you know the snags that are to be removed um snags to a couple snags to remain um and then also to depict the downed limbs that are right at the edge of the um, lawn and wetland area um, and to kind of ex go through and explain which which uh, which snags were to be remain uh, to remove remain and um, just show the overall general condition so um, there's four snags um, three or uh, two would be removed in whole uh, this just portion of the um, willow um, would be removed to um, for the health of it. Um, and then there were, I think, four, one, um, one downed limb, um, another that was right behind one of the snags to be removed, um, likely from it. Um, and this, I think, was the um, from the most recent storm, and this downed limb here that was to be removed, and again is right at the edge and is uh, crushing some of the wetland vegetation, um, is the same limb here. Um, the second, uh, uh, this portion of the tree. Um, uh, the stump and you know the first 20 feet up until where the branches start uh, were proposed to be removed and the with the branches of the crown and um, the trunk beyond um, to be cut to grade and provide habitat and deca um, uh, in uh, in the in sight and there's a additional another limb behind. Um, that had previously broken off, um, and that was also to remain. Um, so, if the commission has questions, so that's yeah, the one. That, this is the one that's vi that's visible from the street, and also visible from the house. That we our our wind our windows look right out, and you can see how that's not very attractive. I've seen worse. Yeah. So my question, Peter, if, if I could. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I see portions of the tree that are are going to remain. Uh, I see portions of the tree that this gentleman would like to be out of his eyesight. Um, but are there opportunities to 
place, maybe cut these down more and place these in other areas of this wetland area that aren't in the view shed of the gentleman? I don't yeah. think it can be done safely. And I think that they would end up having to uh, put machinery much closer to the wetlands than picking, which is a concern to you guys. And can you go back one picture, Matt? To remember where that really wet. Okay, so he was here on a really wet day. Go. Okay, that stays wet after July fourth. So I, the way the road runs, everything from the road comes into the driveway, and and we haven't had a lot of rain or snow. So I don't think you want. I don't want people on that lawn because it's going to destroy whatever grass we have there. All I'm That's saying, really okay, simple. what I'm saying is typically we, if it's in a wetland, we don't let people pull it out of the wetland. Um, and I'm just wondering if this can be, I mean, and you're talking about bringing machinery or whatever, whatever I'm Off talking about. The driveway. I'm talking about people with chainsaws just chopping up what you have there and leaving it in place and not taking anything away and not needing a whole lot of machinery. Um, you know, the thing that concerns me is to the extent that you want to remove stuff out of the wetland for what you perceive to be aesthetic beauty, all of a sudden, am I, am I going to get other folks who decide they, they want to clean up? these resource mean, areas and I bring material out of it and personally property, you know i would prefer to leave this in in the the resource area but cut down to a point where it, it's not so visibly um upsetting to you i'm gonna lose fifty thousand dollars on my property value if i leave those trees there easily. that i do not believe easily I, I don't see you it. just allowed a tree to be removed out of a wetland, <laughs> literally taken out. I'm simply telling you what we've done in the past. Okay, that's your and, opinion. And you are six other people there. Yeah, well, he, he he's correct. I mean, generally, we don't let people okay, whatever you allow me to do, I'll do. And I lose fifty thousand dollars on my value. I'll come to town hall and tell them it's because you guys w w were being whatever. I've done everything by the book here. Okay, I'm not asking for any more than that man is asking. His tree is in the wetlands, and you're letting him take it out. Okay, these trees are on my grass. They border my grass on my property. Peter, okay? uh, I. Peter, I tend to agree with Eric on this, and the tree that he's talking about that we previously said was okay to take down, it's a hazard, it's a, it's a, it's a safety issue. In so uh, this tree, they luckily fell in the right direction. This is an aesthetic issue, and I look at this and I see a beautiful wetland. I see habitat for animals, I see a tree decomposing into a natural area and I don't really see anything wrong with Take this. Take a ride by on from the street and see what you see. Okay? We took a picture from up on the top of the driveway down. You can see you can see it from the street. Whatever you allow me to do, I'll do I won't do any more than you than you allow. But I'm telling you right now, if it's rejected, my wife's gonna get on the phone and 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 it will be worse, trust me. That doesn't scare me. <laughs> yeah. But no, I'm not, I'm not, and I'm not saying that. What I'm trying to find is an opportunity to 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 cut this tree down, but but leave what is there there. I mean, it's on the ground. Fine. I'll talk to the I'll talk to the people they're gonna do and tell them that they they want you they, they want to cut and let it fall in and then just pick out the pick out the branch. That's fine. Okay. What about the stump? That's ten feet wow. off of the ground. That's on my property. But it's next to the wetlands. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So what do you want to what do you want to do with the 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 right side? Are we talking about this one here? Yep. There's two circles, the one on the right. The one that's that standing straight up, Peter? Yeah. 
I don't see anything wrong with that. No, just leave it. Can we cut it down a little? You can cut it down. Just leave the stump. All right, we weren't taking stumps out. Because we can't. The, the roots are in the wetlands. I would never think to do that. We're not taking these trees out. Because we would destroy the wetlands. I'm only trying to get what's down that's affecting the wetlands. It's adding nutrients to the wetlands, though. It, it crushed. It crushed growth. It that's, killed, that's it, a natural process with the wetlands that happens is right. off. Okay, they, whatever you guys decide, I, write, write it, and I uh, will follow it to the T. Hmm. I would like the big branches out which is the reason why I came to you to begin with. I'm still trying to think of a way to be a little more accommodating. I don't know what space I have. I mean, I'm looking at this one picture with the trees there. I don't know how much wetland resource I have here to move some of these branches, and, and, you know, and, and distribute them. Once you know, once you've you've chopped them into something that's more manageable to be moved, it's just going to fall to the ground. It's going to live there for the I'm next. I'm not saying it can't. I'm I'm saying it, this is already on the ground. I'm saying, can we move some of this to another location that's not so much in your eye shot? Are you going to pay for that? We're not going to pay. For that. No, then he's going to come and cut off what you tell me I can cut off. It's going to fall into the wetlands. I'm not going to pick this tree up and move it somewhere. Right, well, then, 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 then cut it in place and leave it in place then. Fine. You, where do you want me to move it? Do you want me to take it across the town? I'll bring it to the east. No, 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 no. A parking lot, put it there. Where do you want me to put it? Nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> on, 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 on your property right there oh, in oh. another one. You're being unreasonable, Eric. Peter, am I being unreasonable? Go in there, pick it up, and move it over four feet. Jim's got his hand up. Jim. Oh, Jim, yeah, I can't see you, Jim. Go ahead. The, the uh, only tree that I see that I'd be okay with cutting or, or taking down is uh, look like the, uh, one or two of the snags that were right next to the uh, open yard. The stuff in the wetlands, I think it just stays in the wetlands, right where it is. It's on my grass. This one here cuts into my grass. Well, that's the way you bought the property. No. Is it is, is the grass and is the grass in the wetland or is the grass in the buffer the grass zone? That's my property. I just want to take the one right in front here, pick it up, remove it. I'm not touching anything below it. Everything that was the there before is still there. The right picture here. You're talking about the one in front, right? Yes. So you want to take that out. It's partly on your property, right? Pick it up, move it out, chop it up, done. Okay, that's fine. If it's on your if it's on the lawn area, then then I would say that would be fine with me. Yeah, and I take would that. too. Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's take, take a look at the other pictures. Out. The other one stays though. The one that's hanging, that's the one. This is the one that's hanging. We agree we could cut that and let it fall in. Yes, right. Yeah. All right. Is right. that all right? Okay, good. The other I'll one you can read. Okay, go to the next picture. This is just on the borderline. Same situation. Same situation as the other one. That seems to do this. It seems awful wet. It is awful wet. That's why it has to be picked out. That's why it's going to cost me a thousand dollars every time they put something around the tree. You think I'm doing this for my health? It's going to cost me five thousand dollars by the time I'm done, and I'm going to lose fifty thousand dollars of property value because no one's going to want to buy looking at this shit. No, that's not, not true. You're making that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're exaggerating that, Peter, just a little. I bit. have fifty one. You, you know, you know if, it, if, if you if you want to cut that one. I mean, I can see where you want to cut that one and take the right side out and leave the rest. Okay. All right. Yep. Next one. Okay. okay next one. Chop it and leave it in place. 
Yeah, just chop that one up. You can just leave it in there. It's mostly in the wetland. So the, the, the left side is technically grass. There. Well, was grass. So if we cut it there and pull that out and then leave the rest, I have no problem with that. Okay. If it's on the grass, then fine. Yeah, if it's, it's on your grass, grass, take it out. Leave the All rest right. in there. Okay? Sorry I'm frustrated. It's just... It's okay. Just yeah, just yeah. you need to relax. That's all. Okay. Next. Yep. So the one on the right, you're saying I if if it's a we can cut that or just leave. It? I don't really. I mean, to me that's I, fine. I, I don't care if you take it or not. But you can see like where that the one you've already agreed to where it's wet. That's all. That comes right out to the base of the property. Snack. Yeah, but that looks that looks like it's leaning into the wetlands, and it, it's eventually just going to fall in. And that's a nice stag. I mean, that that thing there is just going to be alive with insects and all kinds of birds will dig holes in it. I would leave that one. Yep, yeah, no problem. Okay, all right. The the one on the left that that still has branches on it. I have no problem. It's stag to remain. We agree. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we talked about this one. We, we talked about that one. You can, you can take that. You can take that one down. <laughs> Matt, you're taking notes, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. He's got it. That, so we agree that, that anything that's touching the property, and then the one that's in the wetlands, that was the whole reason why we reached out to begin with. That we can cut and then just let it drop. Right. Just let it drop in. Yep. That's great. Okay, and then can we go back to that? Um, can we go back to that um, picture again? Because I can cut it down. I can cut this down yeah. to six feet or something, or four. Yeah, that's feet. fine. Just it's leave the, this down. The stump. Yeah. You can cut the stump down a little. Yeah. Yeah. You okay. can cut the top off. Cut the top off so it looks good. But the hand is is perfect. Yeah. Okay. We're good. Okay. Real good. You didn't want to hear my yeah. from my wife, so it's better that I Are got angry and she got angry. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, just just relax, okay? You, you know, yeah. I, I know, I know, I know. We're all under the strain of, of being at home all the time and nothing to do. You know, seriously. I mean, you know, we're we're trying to accommodate you according uh, yeah. to what we've done in the past. Okay. I'm over now. I'm done. Okay. Good. Okay. Great. Okay. So we're all set, right? Yep. Okay. All right, awesome. Matt, Matt, do you have a real clear uh, write-up for every one of the pictures, what's going to happen to each of these objects? Yes, I plan on including this um, in the um, as an attachment to the uh, RDA or the determination. Um, yep. And we'll have, you know, a better annotated um, then, or okay. we'll revise the annotations. Okay, great. All right, so right, Matt, we'll contact me when it's ready, right? We have to vote, yeah. actually. Yeah, we have to vote first, but we're good. All right, so can I have a motion to, to do a conditional negative on this? Conditional negative, so moved. Second. Second. All in favor, Marilyn? Yes. Eric? Yes. Ian? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Noel? Yes. Uh, Jim, I almost forgot Jim. Yeah. And Peter, yes. Okay, motion to close the public hearing. I move. Second. All in favor, Marilyn? Yes. Eric? Yes. Ian? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Will? Yes. And Jim? Yes. Okay, Peter, you're all set. All right, thank you, Matt, for driving this. And guys, I'm sorry if I got frustrated. It's Okay. Hey, no problem. No problem at all. Peter, I'll be in touch. Your, I appreciate uh, you doing this, and uh, Matt, I'll talk to you in a couple days. Okay. Great. We'll see you. Thank you. Thanks, Bye -bye. Peter. All right. Uh, we're going to continue uh, to an next agenda item, which is a public continuation of public hearing for KMI Real Estate LLC, 0 and 19 Hampton Road. Matt Slager, are you there? Good evening. Can you all hear me? We can. 
Okay, good evening. Mark Slager from Allen Engineering. Uh, Doug Deshane is also on the line somewhere. Yes, good um, evening. Hey, Doug. We're here to uh, follow up on our discussion that we had last uh, at the last meeting regarding the wetland replication area. Um, we did finalize the details and modify what we had initially uh, proposed. Um, we've highlighted the trees that are going to be remaining. Um, I actually went out there with Maureen last week to take a good look at everything and see what we could do. So uh, we've revised the plan. We've got awesome. uh, some trees that are going to be saved and we're planting nine additional trees. And then we have a uh, quite a number of uh, shrubbery plantings too to, to help enhance everything. Um, so with that, I'll turn it back over to the commission and be happy to answer any questions. Okay, you guys, who's got a question on this? I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so, Mark, I just, has there been any, um, is there a plan for the management of the Phragmites? I know the, um, the roadway is going in that proximity. Um, are you looking to manage them before it's removed and the road work is done or, um, What's the plan? Uh, well, to the extent that they can be managed, uh, I've been talking about that with Maureen. She said that it is extremely difficult to manage them. Your best bet is to just do whatever you can to make sure you're not making the situation worse. And what she is recommending that any wetland soil that we remove during the construction of the roadway not be used in the replication area or actually even in the buffer zone at all and have it brought up and used in the yard areas uh, for lawns that's gonna be maintained. And that would um, prevent the Phragmites from being spread in that manner. Um, they are a very aggressive species and um, they're gonna do what they're gonna do and they're very, very hard to control. Uh, but we're gonna do whatever we can to prevent them from, uh, prevent from assisting their migration. Okay. Other uh, commission members on this, Eric? You know, I'm just trying to look at this, um, yeah. you know, map to, or not map, but presentation here. And I can't quite read what it says. So I've got like stars on here and I've got some pines. Can somebody tell me what's coming out in that plan there? Um. So I see these things that look like stars. Are those yeah. plants? Yeah, there's some, uh, the ones that are being removed is an eight inch birch. And if we start going from um, yeah. left to right, there's an eight inch birch uh, right next to where it says number six. Number six okay. is the rub that's going in. That's a high bush blueberry. Okay. Um, there's gonna be a uh, red maple planted, planted right next to where that birch is coming out. Um, then we have a 20 inch pine and an eight inch birch right next to each other. Those are both coming out and they're being replaced with an American elm. Um, and then in the back we have a 36 inch twin pine that has to come out uh, and we're replacing that with a what is this, eastern hemlock it looks like. Um, no, actually, there's an existing 24-inch pine that we're saving that's right next to that. And then we're going to be planting a red maple um, off to the north of that 36-inch pine that's coming out. There's another 36 pine in the um, northwest corner at the top that's going to be saved. Um, so we're doing the grading around that. And then we have a 9-inch red maple and an 8-inch red maple that are both coming out. Uh, they're going to be replaced with a eastern hemlock. And then there's also a 24-inch pine that's coming out that's going to be replaced with an American elm. Uh, and then we have a few other trees going in. We have another American elm. So the trees that are going in, we've got a total of nine trees going in. And there's going to be three American elms, three eastern hemlocks, and three red maples. So, we're so gonna... I guess my only comment to, to that, 
Mark would be um, the the hemlock. Um, what's the survivability of that? Isn't there like a, some sort of disease that destroys uh, eastern hemlock? I have no idea. Like a fungus or something? Yeah, I have no. I don't know. These were recommended by North Environmental. Okay. Um, I mean, we I, I would check on, on on the hemlock. Um, I, I thought there was some issue with hemlock in the area, but you know, if it's okay and it can survive, I'm okay with it. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think they have a disease resistant strain out now, Eric. But... Okay. Yeah. Marilyn? Mark, it would seem to me it would be a lot easier to read this uh, uh, map with, with the vegetation if you had you color coded it. So we can see what's being removed and what's being, you know, put in. This is a little confusing. I understand when you explain it, but looking at it, I won't remember it next week. Right. Yeah. And when you, when you look at it, if, if you look at a full size copy, you can actually see that the trees that are coming out are in half tone gray. Or maybe you could do something with a little one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hey, it's so hard to do stuff remote. I appreciate it. So, yeah, I mean, how many trees? Yeah, how so. many trees are coming out, and how many are going in? It looks like seven are going out. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Uh, eight, nine being removed, and nine going in. Okay. I'd like to see that color coded map. Well, he, he, you know, you, you could I, see I, it I, if you saw it so, in person. I yeah, know. Okay. I know. So, I know. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm being no G. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So any other questions on this uh, wetlands replication? Eric? I know previously, I think this is okay. Um, up towards the road, we, the replication, I believe, is going to be one-to-one. -one. I think that we're going to look. Are uh, we leaving that the way it was? Uh, we're actually at one and a half to one. Okay. Uh, I've, I've changed the shape of this a little bit. I've actually moved it so it doesn't go all the way up to, if you look down in the lower right, uh, previously I had it going up to flag 14B1, but there's a significant grade change there. Um, so in order to make the grading and the hydrology work, I actually moved it down to 14 and then I went over towards uh, flag, it looks like 7B1 over in that area. So the total replication is 4,000 square feet. And that doesn't include, um, we've eliminated the replication over by the um, the roadway. So this is the only replication. So it okay. comes out to one and a half to one. Okay. Okay. So the only other question I had after our meeting last week, uh, you know, we, we were talking about the uh, trail, okay? And we were talking about that footbridge that cuts over to the Conscon property. Yeah. And so, you know, when, when I thought about that for a while, I, I, I realized that, you know, we have a huge problem in, in getting these things done. And, and so would you guys consider putting that footbridge in or at least putting some money aside to build the footbridge? Because it, it, it's tough for us to get this work done. Um, I would certainly bring that up to my client. I don't see um, any issues with that. Um, you know, if it's certainly, because, if it's Mark, something that you guys crossing, How many feet is that? Can you tell us how many feet that, that bridge is going to be? Um, last time, I think it's about 25 to 30 feet. Yeah, it's pretty long. So, yeah. yeah. And it, is the wetland there well defined or is it kind of more of a marsh? Uh, it's very well defined. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. So it is, it is a big distance then. Yeah. Yeah. It is. And the, yeah, the, other, the interesting thing is if you actually, um, I can't on this plan, if you could get up another plan, but if you actually head to the East towards the conservation, the, the town property, the, um, you can cross that stream with no problem at all without even having to build a footbridge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you if you could do that, because the stream actually disappears, goes underground, and then breaks out um, just um, just to the east of uh, our property, and then it opens up into a wider wetland. Um, yeah. 
So you can actually access that without even building the footbridge, but we showed it so that um, to show that the plant to show the planning board that we could actually access that part of of the site. We weren't proposing to build it, but you know, if the commission wants it built, I would I'll mention it to my client and see if yeah, will you please? Yeah, because yeah, we just have a tough time getting these things done. So mm -hmm. especially that length. I mean, that's quite a long length. I mean, we're, we're putting we're putting a thirty foot bridge in over at uh, O'Brien Farm. You know, and, that, it, and it's going to cost about thirty grand to build that that footbridge. So. Wow. Yeah. It, okay. Mr. Chair, that's an eighty foot footbridge. Yep. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's a little different. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So whatever you can do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any you. other questions from the commission? Any questions no, from the audience works. in this application? So I guess uh, we can start to write an order of conditions for our next meeting, Matt. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. All right. All right. So we'll continue into this to our, I don't have my calendar up. When's the next meeting, Matt? February 10th. February 10th. So we'll continue this meeting to our February 10th meeting at 730. Is that okay with you, Matt? That works for me, yep. Yeah. That'll be fine, okay, can Chairman. I, yep, can I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Eric? Marilyn? Yes. Eric, yes. Yes. Ann? Yes. Margaret? Kim? Yes. Noel? Yes. Peter, yes. Okay, Mike, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. All right. Thank, thank you very much. much. Have a good thank evening. Okay, our next agenda item is a continuation of a public hearing for Stone Ridge Development, Greystone Pond. They've requested a continuous to our March 24th meeting. Can I have a motion to that effect? I'll move. Second. All in favor? Marilyn? Yes. Eric? Yes. Ann? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Jim and Noel? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're going to move on to our discussion items. Uh, our next discussion item is Abbott School Porcelain Berry Management. So, um, just so you know, I, I had looked at the balances and in, in some of the accounts we have. So, um, the, the, it, if we want this to go forward, you know. I, I know we need to talk more about how it would be done, but uh, we do have money in, in both the receipts reserve fund and we do, do have money in the uh, the old conservation trust fund that we could use to fund this. So there is funding available. Okay. Uh, I know Diane's there. Diane, you want to uh, speak up? Sure. Uh, Dave is also here. Dave Edmonton. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, we did you want a short synopsis or are you guys all set? Yeah, or? Yeah. No, just give you know, I took a look at the pictures. It was amazing. It, it really yeah. looked like something needed to be done. I, I, know. It, I, I was astounded. Me too. It's every time you every year it gets worse. And when we see the picture, we go, Oh yeah, it is bad. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 I was shocked. Yeah, so, there you go. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Um yeah. so just That's a short a, a quick synopsis. Yeah of the yeah. proposal, um, the Western Conservation Trust uh, would like to suggest an invasive uh, control measure at Abbott School on uh, Depot to halt the progression of Asiatic porcelain berry uh, on the site. Control of this invasive um, at the site would help to preserve the diversity and natural landscape of this parcel and adjoining um, properties uh, and also other parcels of open space in town, especially we've noted in the uh, center area, we're starting to see some spread of this, and we believe it's from this uh, initial infestation. It's been going on for a while, so I really don't know how many years. <laughs> Seems like it, each year it gets bigger. Um, uh, porcelain berry is extremely aggressive invasive plant. Uh, I looked it up, the US Forest Service uh, states it's a category one invasive, so, and they said it's a non-native, highly invasive um, uh, plant. It's a vine, actually. So it's extremely uh, aggressive vine. If left unchecked, it can spread uh, rapidly over a large vicinity. 
Uh, once this happens, it can outcompete like our other, you know, other invasives that are like this, uh, some other native species, thereby uh, ne negatively affecting local plant life and in turn the natural ecosystem and terrain. Uh, currently, there's a large swath of porcelain berry on the grounds of Abbott School. Um, as pictured in, in what you're seeing now, and also we included a map of the uh, infestation. Uh, we we decided it's approximately one acre now, so it's it really has spread. Um, due to the extent of which it's already um, covered these, this parcel, traditional means of eradicating it, like we've done with <clears throat> Mile a Minute, and water chestnut doing hand pulling and such it's just beyond that type of control unfortunately yeah. so um so just to avoid any more consequences to this we were we're asking for some way to fund the treatment using a contractor a landscape contractor and we've included the um proposal that we had done last year when we were hoping maybe to get this addressed um so we've included that in the um, package there but you know that was last year and that was one contractor at that point it was thirty one hundred dollars for treatment um and that included you know some foliar application and um cutting these i mean these vines can go up to 15 20 feet it's just amazing how tall they can grow and so they if they're cut he can do a foliar application as well um but that would be maybe I think this contractor said possibly would cover maybe 90% control. Um, but then he advised the next year you would have to look at what's remaining and try and make sure you treat that or somehow control it. The goal is to get it to the point where you could cut it, keep continuing to cut it, and maybe start to replace it with grass or or other plants. But you just mm -hmm. gotta start cutting it down each year and hopefully then it's under control to do that. Um, so our proposal is is from this, um, and the other uh, point to bring out is the treatment for this particular invasive. We're not very familiar with it, but we're becoming familiar with it. Uh, I guess when it blooms, it's in June or July, so that is what the contractor said is the ideal time to treat it. And then um, the, I guess the issue is because it's on school property, and there's a you know pesticide policy and all that, so. So that was another point I wanted to bring up. Um, so we just feel it's vitally important to, to try and work together to start to address these issues where the invasive becomes so out of control that if we just started in the beginning to try and control it, we would prevent some of this stuff from happening. So Jim? that's our thoughts. Um, Diane, I'm curious what the, the, the plan is. Would it be to use a contractor for the initial knockdown and maybe one year, you know, the follow-up yes. next, next summer. And then after that, a, uh, an internal project to, to do hopefully a small amount that's left on a regular basis. Yes, that's the plan. That's the idea that that's what he was talking about, the contractor. Okay, so we're talking like maybe 3,000 this year and maybe another 1,000 or 2,000 in the following year, and then it would become an internal project. Right. Because that right, that point you. that that point would become more manageable. All right, thank you. And, and we did talk to Paul Fox, who's the facilities person, but it's very much in support of this, and he's do whatever he can to support it because he's also concerned about the level of infestation. Um, so that that was good to to do to know. I'm in favor of it, Peter. Okay, sounds good, Matt. Uh, Diane, I just. From a previous career, I'm familiar with most of the herbicides proposed. Um, I know you mentioned in your email uh, the use of glyphosate and triclopyr, but the, um, if, as shown on the screen, the uh, quote from the, uh, the contractor um, includes the use of imazapyr for foliar application. And again, just as a uh, basis from my previous career. Um, I know that can have soil activity and can okay. damage trees um, or can be translocated through soil to roots. 
Um, so okay. that, that's my one concern, especially where it is climbing up the trees. Um, I, I, but I also understand the need for aggressive management, especially um, later on um, as a last option. So I, I, I'm, I, I understand the uh, the goal and every the the commission yeah. or the uh, conservation trust desire to manage. Um, I just want to make sure we're not doing further damage to um, it, it, that the, the herbicides are being applied in a responsible right. way. And I, right. know is, I know the contractor right. is licensed, so that's. Well, that's great. No, I, we appreciate you bringing that to our attention. Um, that's something we can ask about. I think part of that was when we walked around with him last year, he, you know, they were intermingled with other types of invasives like bittersweet, um, I think a Japanese barberry, a couple of various types and so we were wondering oh you know would that affect those as well and he might have you know maybe tried to address that as well but but for the most part i think 95 percent of it is porcelain berry from what we saw okay. thank you should we consider putting the contractor um on on contract for two treatments over the two years so again this was done we got this contract con uh, proposal done last summer and then you know july so we haven't been in contact because there was no funding for that or support for that at the time so we haven't reached out to them right now but we but how, we plan to do so if we get support and then find out um what his recommendations would be okay so we're supportive so go back and find out what the number would be and then come back to us yeah that's all yeah give us the final okay. number I mean, that and, would and be I think for, if they ask, ask him for a quote, what it would be for, for the two years also. Yeah. I think we're yeah, definitely going to have to go more than one with the amount that's Yeah, there. I think so. Yeah. I know. I'm sorry. It's really, yes. Oh, Diane, have you gotten school committee, uh, school department uh, approval to do um, this? So Paul Fox met with uh, superintendent and business managers last week. I think it was on the 16th, and they give full support. Um, I okay. don't have anything written, but um, they do give full support. So okay. that's good. Okay. Okay, so come back to us with a final contract, okay? Okay, great. Sounds good. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, our next agenda item is open space residential development, standard conditions. Matt. So, Ed, this was kind of started uh, with Carol um, regarding the Wendell Place in Clark kernel role subdivisions um, where um, some basic, I'm looking to provide some basic standard conditions to the planning board so that um, much like when um, the planning board's reviewing a subdivision or, or a special permit for uh, an open space uh, residential development, they can, we, we can provide these standard conditions so that um, the, the burden of preparing the conservation restrictions isn't falling on um, town staff. Um, right. And, you know, yeah. as the developer is achieving some benefit from the um, density of the, of the development, um, we, we thought it would be best to, you know, try and get um, some of these things done at the same time, because uh, the, the commission is, has seemed, in favor of accepting the conservation restrictions. So um, mm -hmm. if they're not gonna have, to, if, if the developer doesn't have to go and um, shop it around to a land trust or, um, or another entity, um, I think providing them with, you know, some, some, some standard conditions for our approval um, would be beneficial. The first is, um, prep, is the preparation of the, um, uh, conservation restriction application, including the baseline documents, the um, drafting the actual conservation restriction using the model from the state, uh, the plan of land. Again, they should have that readily available. Um, and then any other additional materials or documentation as be necessary. And I would be looking to have all those um, ready for ready um, and approved for local signatures, you know, so multiple iterations of review by the Mass Office of Ener Energy and Environmental Affairs. Um, 
by the town and you know town staff can assist with the drafting and i think having them come before the commission for any um unique situations in terms of uh, uh, prohibited or uh, permit permissive uses in the conservation restriction um, but have it be conditional upon the issuance of the last certificate of occupants or last uh, certificate of occupancy so that it, their hands that, that they do have to um, have things in, in place um, and again if they so choose to uh, contribute money to have a third party prepare it, I think that would be acceptable. Um, and then secondly, um, having the actual conservation restrictions demarcated um, with if by any mean if any any means so that when encroachment issues do arise, which we've seemed to have a lot lately, um, we can look and say, okay, well, the boundary is there on the left and there on the right, and you are five feet past it. This isn't, you know, it's not some, well, I didn't know where my, where, where the conservation restriction actually was. No, mm -hmm. it's clearly demarcated and, um, and you're, and you're, you're ignoring it as opposed to um, ignorance of, well, I don't really know where the exact uh, property bounds are. Um, and then lastly, um, and this was touched upon by Peter, uh, during the Colonel Rose uh, discussion tonight, um, if there are going to be any trails or um, uh, bridges proposed, we, we want to have those done before the last certificate of occupancy is issued, just so we can make sure that what the developers are um, proposing at the early stages is what's actually getting done and not getting left behind, um, just as a unfinished. Yeah, that's good. I think I think this is great. Yeah, yeah. This lays it all out from up front. So, any yep. other comments? Nope. Sounds good. It looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, also uh, to the so you, planning board for their meeting. Yeah. You want to vote on it, or you just want us to give you the okay to go forward with this? Um. Let's do a vote. I'll, I'll, sure. I'll approve this letter going to the planning board. You have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor, Marilyn? Yes. Eric? Yes. Ian? Yes. Margaret? Noel? Yes. yes. And Jim? Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for getting this Thanks, put Matt. together. Excellent. Okay, next agenda item is tree decorating at Stony Brook Conservation Area. Okay. It happened. So, Matt, you want to uh, show us what you found up there? Is it not on the screen? Or is yeah. it it's on the screen? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Um, so, about a quarter mile up the Neshoba Trail past the bath, um, bathhouse. Um, some uh maybe woodland creature or local resident i'm not 100 percent sure um decided to decorate uh, about 50 feet of the trees of, along the trail with um, hearts of various colors um primarily red white and pink um commission's thoughts is this remnants from the um uh, Girl Scout and Friends issue, That's or is this something? Else? Or is this something? Well, it, it's probably it's probably an add-on from it, okay? Because they, Matt, they did take everything down from that project. Yes. And now, we have, and everything now we have. Now we have a copy. Remember, they took yeah, down. We've got a copy. Yeah. But now we got this junk that other people are dumping in there. Yeah. I, I really I wasn't happy yeah. with it then, and I'm still still not. But they asked that. permission, and these he folks didn't. So. He encouraged it and invited it. <laughs> well anyways this this should be taken down right you guys yeah. don't you agree yeah. Matt needs to take this stuff down of course before valentine's day i'll be yeah. out tomorrow tomorrow morning oh, all bundled up there you go can, 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 can we send a can we send a letter to the friends uh stating that uh if they can somehow notify those people that participated in their event that uh 
they they shouldn't be uh, doing this uh, free will without permission from the commission. How do we know it's somebody that participated in the event? Well, the person. Well, it, that's what it looks like. It looks like you know, maybe, yeah. Well, they they have they have a Facebook page where they they talk to people. So I, I would just suggest that yeah. you know maybe you can send them a letter and ask their fellow okay. uh, Facebook is you know not to put stuff up at the camp without permission. That I like. That okay. That's I can draft a letter and Peter, I'll send it to you for your review. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. Next agenda item. Uh, whoa, we got two requests for a certificate of compliance. The first one is is the Western Rec Department for Forge Pond Beach. Did they finish? Yes, they have finished. Um, and if people haven't been out there, I highly recommend that they do. It looks great. Yeah. Um, it does great. And I think they almost everything was per plan. I think they had to take down a couple extra um, pine trees near the. Um, the far side of the playground, um, which was um, discussed uh, with Carol back before um, the project began. And upon doing the site walk with the rec department director, Jim Duane, he, um, they had in, they've, they've planted a couple more, I think, oaks um, in the south, um, south of the parking lot um, in the, would it, uh, in the grass grassland areas that are maintained only a couple times a year so um everything looks good um the bio the bioretention soil uh looks to be doing well i think there's a couple little bits of um uh, seeding that needs to be done but it's right around the fence of the um uh, playground area and recommend the commission issue the certificate of compliance Okay, motion to accept the certificate. Yep. Well, Jim has something to say. Access oh. to the pond is that uh, still okay for fishermen? They can. That, that was something we uh, mentioned back when they were coming before us. They, they were still supposed to be able to get access to the to the uh, the outfall stream as well as the uh, area adjacent to the beach for fishing. Uh, yes, um, there's the there's a, No, it's not. I mean. There's a emergency gate at the south of the um, parking lot, you know, to prevent um, to enable access for emergency services. But um, they, there there is um, access to the shoreline for fishing. We actually saw some disturbance of the uh, outfall structure of the bioretention swale that um, was likely caused by um, uh, people traversing the Ripper app to get to the uh, outlet channel. Okay, can I have a motion to approve this? So moved. So moved. All in favor, Marilyn? Yes. Uh, Eric? Yes. Ann? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Will? Yes. And Jim? Yeah. Okay. Uh, our second certificate is from Dury 20 Brightwood Drive, 334608. Uh, this was a order of conditions that was issued and never acted upon. Um, the, a second order of conditions was filed for this lot, um, 650, which received a certificate of compliance uh, in the 97-98 timeframe. Um, and it seems like this one was never closed out. The homeowner is looking to sell and it came up during a title search um, and since nothing was ever done against this order um, and the house had an order that has a certificate of compliance issued i'm comfortable request um, recommending the commission issue this certificate of compliance okay okay motion to approve Marilyn. second okay Marilyn. Yeah. Uh, eric Yes. Ian? Yes. Margaret? Yes. I'm Noel? Yes. And Jim? Yes. So Peter, yes. Okay, anything else? Anything else out there that anybody wants to talk about? We don't. Marilyn? We have nothing to sign tomorrow, correct, Matt? 
Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. They'll, There'll be two RD, the two determinations of applicability and the two certificates of certainly. compliance. Um, right. And I will meet people in at the side entrance to the fire station again. Um, okay. We yeah, have to go on the picnic table. Matt, can I come like at twelve again? Is that all right? Yes. Thank you. Certainly. I'll I'll be over at the fire station at one if that. Works. That works. And and um, we'll go inside the tables and sign there. Yes. Yep. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, Peter, what about the geocache that's on the discussion item? They're coming back next next meeting. Okay. Yeah. School and yeah. scouting, lots of school and scouting this week. They weren't able to make it. Okay. Thank you. And I'll come into the building at 12. Okay. Okay. Motion to I'll, adjourn. I'll probably, be there. I'll probably be there likewise around noon, Matt. Okay. Just, uh, Jim, I'll send you my phone, uh, my cell phone. You can text me and I'll. I'll I'll meet up with you. That's all right. I, I we, we, is it, we can't go into town hall now. Is that it? No, it's yeah, closed. it's still close to the public. You're banned. Okay. You're banned. All right. Thank you. That'll work. Even though we're special employees, we're banned, huh? <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. We're certainly not right. essential. Yeah, I know we're not essential. We I know that yeah. we've known that for years, Eric. <laughs> No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, motion to adjourn. I move. Second. All in favor, Marilyn. Yes. Eric. Yes. Ian. Yes. Margaret. Yes. Noel. Yes. And Jim. Yes. Good night. And Peter. Yes. Boy, I'll be glad when we can meet in person again. That's all I can say. It'll be nice. Same, same here. I